Is the Canon R7 the best low budget cinema powerhouse? We shot a commercial project using the R7 to find out. Let's go. So here we are now with the new Canon EOS R7, the first reincarnation of the 7D in the mirrorless era. So we talked to our friends over at Contrast Cine, awesome rental house here in Nashville, Tennessee, that set us up with everything we need to shoot ourselves a proper commercial. Because that's all you need to become a professional cinematographer. Stuff. That's correct. What about story? Shut, Shut up, up, Julian. Julian. <laughs> oh, that's so good. good. We have a lot of thoughts about the Canon R7, but before we get to those thoughts, let's watch the commercial. All right, sit down. I'm going to fill you in on a big secret. For years, I've been licensing all the music for my unboxing videos from Soundstripe. It's my destination for high quality music and stock video. Soundstripe? Hey, that's not half bad. Yeah, I can feel it down in my bones. Oh yeah, I feel it too. There it is. Wrong room. Hey, they got sound effects too. <laughs> Look at that. Soundstripe, simplified licensing, world-class music, workflow extensions, and more keeping creators creating since 2016. So there you have it. What'd you guys think of my acting? They, uh, they actually got some really cool costumes for all that at Goodwill. It just fit like a glove. It was amazing. But yeah, why do we shoot on the R7? There's a couple of like professional qualities about the R7 in a little consumer body for what, 1500 bucks? Now, of course that's not cheap by any standards, but that's cheap for a cinema camera for sure. So let's talk about a couple of the features that make this camera really favorable for shooting something like a commercial and why we decided to kind of take that step forward with mm -hmm. this. This camera could actually shoots in something called super fine mode, which is a 7K oversampling down res to 4K. Mm -hmm. So you get really, really clean images. We were actually really impressed with yeah, that. Yeah, and it's 4K 10-bit 422. In addition to that, it is a native RF mount. So that allowed us to convert to a PL mount lens. Mm -hmm. So we could actually shoot with cinematic lenses in this case. Kawa Anamorphics. By no means the proper way to use <laughs> this camera, but that was kind of some of the fun of it. So we're a little spoiled because Chris actually owns and operates the C500 Mark II, which is what we're shooting on right now. That camera can shoot almost 6K raw. Can this do that, Chris? So not quite, but this camera can shoot in something called C-Log3. Doesn't have quite as much dynamic range mm -hmm. as raw settings like the C500, but that is still a professional log profile, which gives you kind of that flatter image that allows you to get as much information out of the footage yeah. that you possibly can. There's there's a couple of other things that we messed around with. This camera does have IBIS, which stands for in-body image stabilization. The sensor is essentially floating in the middle with uh, little springs and it stabilizes itself as you're moving the camera. I would not recommend using IBIS with an anamorphic lens because this camera was not designed for anamorphic at all. So the math on all that probably is gonna be a little off. Right. But if you are using standard spherical cinema lenses with a PL adapter, you can manually punch in what focal length the lens you're using and then the IBIS will match whatever lens you're shooting on and in that case then you can have a stabilized cinema lens then obviously if you're using EF lenses it automatically is able to detect what lens is on it So again, because this camera isn't a professional cinema camera, it is a prosumer camera, it doesn't have anamorphic de-squeeze in there. Again, we're not necessarily using it the way that we should. So we had to get a external monitor so we can actually view what we're filming accurately. The only problem with that is that this camera has a micro HDMI port. Wah, wah, so wah. <laughs> I think we both kind of wish it was full HDMI. We did uh, bump it a few times. It feels like it's gonna snap at any moment. We lost signal because it had fallen out. It did provide some some minor headaches. We did notice a couple times on set that the temperature gauge would kind of pop up, but we never actually overheated the camera. It never shut yeah. down at any point. Camera stayed on mm -hmm. the entire, what, six hours of that yeah. shoot. They put a little dialogue up that shows that the temperature is getting warmer, but it doesn't shut off or anything like that. And then there's like a scale of how hot it's getting, which is 
is really, I think, a nice thing to add as a user right. to, to be, basically see a gauge showing me how much longer I got until I got to ditch the camera. Right. Outside of this shoot, I used this on a wedding shoot all day on a gimbal in decent weather. It was about 70, 80 degrees in Seattle. But I was outside and I was shooting all day in the sun and I didn't have any overheating issues that were a problem for me. So I do think this performs much better than the R5 in terms of overheating. So we were shooting in a fairly low lit scenario and it was intentional. It kind of had a moody kind of look to it. And we were both a little concerned about noise and surprisingly, it, the image was fairly noise free. Yeah, it, it, especially again, considering that we had to push in so far on this mm -hmm. footage because we shot anamorphic, mm -hmm. we had to punch in quite a bit. You cannot really detect a ton of noise. There's definitely some in there, but mm -hmm. like this is some fairly clean footage. I mean, I'm punched in here 400%. Even in here, it's like you'd expect to see some noise, but it's like the noise that's there is pretty soft. It doesn't feel very it. digital. Exactly, and I, I've seen quite a bit of digital looking noise on the R5, so this is looking good to me. And I think just generally, the skin tones look great. We're just slapping on a little C-Log LUT here in Resolve with just minor color tweaks, and it looks really good straight out of the box. And I think that's that, again, that 422 10-bit that's mm -hmm. really working in our favor. The colors are all awesome. I mean, in this wide shot, I love the colors that you can see on the lamp over here the window, the kind of mm -hmm. color contrast that we're getting. I mean, I'm incredibly impressed with this camera, especially again for a $1,500 body. Yes, you couldn't get an image like that with the original 7D, that's for sure. Do we recommend this camera for filmmakers? I would never really say as an A camera. Even though we were using it as an A camera for this shoot, it was primarily for testing purposes. This is really almost the perfect B camera to my C70. The low light performs well, the resolution is great, the dynamic range is great. We obviously weren't even testing the autofocus in this test, but the autofocus is incredible on this. This is a wonderful little gimbal camera to pair with my C70. I think it was a great little video camera. I think it was really, really fun to shoot. On. It's fifteen hundred dollars. Again, That's the yeah, thing. it's crazy. Like the R five is also a great B camera to a cinema camera. That camera still costs like twenty five hundred or three thousand dollars, depending on where you get it from. This is really a crazy price point for what you're getting. Yeah. If you like this video, you can learn more about the R seven in our dedicated gear review, where we go into all the different aspects of this camera, so you can decide if it's the best fit for your needs. Watch it right here. Was should it, should he pan over to Julian and he'd be like, but what about story? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, Julian. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs>